Hi guys, Sam's my name uh, from ProLift Training and Assessment. Made this short video to help people uh, with their study. So basically, you've already done day one at ProLift and then you're gone home and you've got a blank student activity book sitting in front of you and you've been asked to do some homework. So I'm going to read through the written uh, questions and we're going to uh, have a brief discussion on them, but um, it's for people who may need a little bit of assistance when they're at home, they've forgotten a lot of the stuff, it may appear to be a bit daunting, all that new material that you've got in front of you. So what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on the written stuff, which is the most important stuff, yeah? All right, so question three, if a high-risk worker is not working safely under a high-risk work license, what can the health and safety regulator do? If they're like cops, they'll fine you, they can suspend your license, cancel your license, or direct you to reassess. What must an employer provide for you before you can operate a new type of forklift truck? So you've just been given a license and then they've asked you to jump on a forklift truck. You cannot do that unless you've had supervision, training, instruction, or information, combination of the four. Uh, you cannot just jump on a forklift after you've been issued a license. List three obligations employers have to ensure the health and safety of all workers. So when we come into this facility, uh, the boss has got to provide a few things for us. So you can have uh, adequate amenities or adequate facilities as one of your answers because you need to be provided with you know, first aid kits, water, toilets and all that sort of stuff. So we've got adequate facilities or adequate amenities in this um, building here. Uh, you must be given safe uh, equipment and also a safe environment and safe work instructions. So question six, what is your duty of care as a worker? So to work safe, don't hurt yourself, don't hurt others. Where can I find uh, workplace compliance documents for safe operations of forklift trucks? So you've got your Work Health and Safety Acts there. You've also got your codes of practice, which is the, the acts condensed. Uh, you've also got a safe work method statements and you've got uh, your safe operating procedures. Before starting work, what else should you plan for other than site hazards? So this acronym here, acronym here, place, yeah? Other than site hazards. So when you get to the question in your exam, it'll say, do not include site hazards or other than site hazards. We need to think about permits. We sign on to them. Location, where are we working? License, is everyone licensed? Access to tasks, can we get in, can we get out? Communications required and equipment required. So uh, those are some things you need to think about before starting work other than site hazards. So P-L-A-C-E is a good way to remember that. <coughs> uh, nine, what are the minimum safe distances you must remain away from power lines in your state? Three meters, six meters and eight meters. If you want to know the voltage of power lines you're working in, who would you contact? The local power authority. 11, uh, to identify power lines, what are two observations you can make? So you've got look up and lift signs, you've got tiger tail spinners, marker balls. If the ground surface is wet and slippery, what three actions might you take? So reduce speed and brake early, avoid using ramps or slopes, avoid harsh braking or steering. Question 15, how will operating a forklift truck on uneven ground or soft soils affect the forklift truck? It will change the stability. To prevent exposure to dangerous gases, identify the top forklift you'd use in a confined space, so electric or hydrogen forklift. If an attachment is fitted to a forklift, what would be affected? So the capacity, if we've got a, a load on there, the capacity might be reduced uh, and the stability may change. And also um, the load centre distance could increase because you've got an attachment like that on there. Uh, where is the fulcrum? Uh, question 18. The fulcrum point of balance is where the front tyre touches the ground. Yeah, so that where that arrow is pointing there. Uh, where is the load centre distance? So that is the load centre distance there, 600 millimetres from the fork heel arm. Yeah. And why is forklift rear end swing dangerous or destructive? So uh, rapid sideways movement of a forklift may injure or kill. 
where would you find the rated capacity of information on the forklift or attachment? So it's asking on the forklift or on the attachment, where would you find the rated capacity on the data plate? What must you be aware of when using a jib attachment on a forklift? So a jib, jib attachment is like a hook. So it's like a, a almost like a little mini crane. So there's our masts there and our forks down here somewhere. So if we've got a load on there, the load may swing, yeah? Uh, the crane may become unstable and also the capacity may be reduced. Uh, what are the following attachments that can be used on the forklift truck? So slippers, they're like extensions. Uh, and then you've got the work platform like we've got downstairs. Uh, we've got a jib attachment, which is like a hook or a little mini crane. And then you've got rotating attachments like in factories. All right, so at least three people you would consult with about workplace hazards, safety officer, other, super, other workers and supervisors. Why do you talk to them? To ID hazards and implement controls. And... Define the following, what is a hazard? Something that has the potential to harm you. That is a hazard. A risk is the chance of harm from hazard. Those are two pretty important questions. Uh, I would like to see you written exactly like that. So uh, something that has the potential to harm you is a hazard and a risk is chance of harm from hazard. 10 potential workplace hazards which could affect operations. So you've got uh, up the top there in the sky, you've got uh, wind, rain, lightning, you've got power lines, then you've got trees up the top there. Uh, in front of you, you've got uh, people, pedestrians, uh, plant, uh, equipment, and obstructions. And then you've got ground conditions that can affect you when you're driving around. So trenches, underground services, all that sort of stuff. Uh, two reasons why you must wear a seatbelt on a forklift truck. Safety to stop you being thrown uh, forward in the event of a collision. What controls would you apply with the traffic management plan to keep you safe and pedestrians safe? So workers and pedestrians, barricading, signage and spotters. Uh, there's four forms of communication used in the workplace. You've got signage, two-way radio, hand signals and verbal. Uh, 42, what actions would you take if you're unsure of a spotter's hand signal? Stop and ask to clarify. 43, you're operating a forklift at light. What must you have in place before operating? Adequate lighting over the whole work area. 45, why would you check the weather forecast before commencing work? To help prepare work activities, to schedule the work, uh, to identify what risk controls you need to put in place. So list three types of hazards, 46. List three types of hazards created by weather that impacts forklift operations. So you've got, uh, let's pick three easy ones. So smoke, heavy rain, strong winds. List four, oh, we've got over the next page. Uh, 50, right, 50. So during your pre-start check, a hydraulic leak is detected and data plays missing or damaged, what action would you take? Don't use a forklift, tag it out of service, report it to supervisor, record it in the logbook. The seven pre-start checks you would conduct on a forklift truck. Um, so you've obviously got logbook, data plate, fluids, leaks, battery terminals, tire condition, masts, uh, tines, there's a lot there. You'll be walking around the machine uh, a lot of the day so take note of the pre-starts of the exam question. What could happen if you refuel the forklift with the engine running? The fuel could ignite and you could have a fire. Before using a forklift, there's five checks you would carry out on the rims and the tyres. So tread condition, UV damage, chunks missing, uh, face condition, rim condition, are the nuts secure and in place? Yep. And why is correct air pressure important on airfield tyres to ensure the forklift remains stable. And also the load as well. So stability of the load and the forklift. What must you refer to, uh, 58, what must you refer to for the correct requirements when attaching and securing the forklift attachment? The operator's manual or manufacturer's instructions. There's three post-start checks. So you've started it up. What do you check? You check the steering, the brakes, the horns. 
identify the major guards uh, on a forklift. So the load backrest, that's it there, sorry, uh, stops the load fouling the mast and protects the operator. The overhead guard stops objects being dropped onto the operator. Uh, why must batteries be charged in a well ventilated area? 63, uh, to reduce the risk of build up of explosive gases. gases. Uh, list three methods to determine the weight of an unmarked load. Uh, so you've got, you can weigh it, you, you can uh, calculate the load, uh, you can, it can be in a consignment note. It says, the question actually says unmarked load, it's a bit unkind uh, because you can also, for the most part, you'll have it marked on the load too. So um, assessment question, you can have that uh, as an answer marked on the load. All right. Um, why must you never raise or lower a load over people? Because falling objects may injure or kill. Uh, when, you, when you're able to travel with a passenger in the forklift, when it's designed to, so if it's got three seats in it and three seat belts, you can carry three people. Generally, as a rule of thumb, they've got one operator uh, in those. So. There's two reasons why it's unsafe to carry a load on one fork. So you can damage the fork. If that's 5,000 kilo load and this machine can, is rated to 5,000 kilos, then that is designed to be carried on two. Carrying it on one, you could lose the load, uh, you could make the um, forklift unstable um, and damage the load, damage the forklift, all sorts of things. So we uh, don't carry a load on one fork. Um, what height should the load be positioned when traveling? So no higher than axle height or as low as possible. 71, if you can't see over your load, so it's blocking your view, what can you do? You can drive in reverse, you can use a spotter, or you can restack the load. Uh, how will the forklift truck be affected if the load is not hard up against the heel of the forklift arms, reduces capacity, and can make the forklift unstable? Why must you constantly lo uh, monitor load movement? Question 73, so the fork and load remain stable. Before shifting a load, what would you place over the gap between a truck and a loading dock? So you've got the concrete loading dock coming up and there's a gap there. You need to have a secure bridge plate or a secure dock plate. Why is it unsafe to turn a forklift with a load when it's on a ramp or sloping service? You may tip the forklift, you may lose the load. If you experience failure or loss of controls when working, what should you do? Stop, tag the machine out, and report to the appropriate person and record it in the logbook. In the event of rollover, list three steps you would follow. So, brace yourself, yeah, lean away from the impact, and don't jump. 79, so uh, there is a, an acronym here for if you hit power lines. So if you hit power lines, what do you do? Stop, warn others, try and break free. If safe, stay where you are. If unsafe, jump and shuffle away eight meters. Why eight meters? Because that's the maximum voltage, uh, 330,000 volts, that you, you don't want to be near that. So eight meters is the best distance to be away. You're not going to turn around and go, what is the voltage of those power lines? You just need to get eight meters away. And then you report and you record the incident. What direction must the load face when traveling up a ramp? So the forks and the load must be facing up the ramp. There's three things you must be aware of when you're stacking loads on top of each other. The surface must be firm and level. Heavy loads on the bottom don't stack too high. Keep the stack, stack straight and stable. Uh, why is it important to ensure you have centralized your side shift before traveling to maintain the stability of the fork and the load? 83, what four actions would cause a forklift truck to sip over sideways while traveling? Well, if you have low tire pressure, you may tip it. If you turn with the load raised, you may tip it. Uh, turning on a slope, you may tip it. Uh, driving at, on uneven surfaces or turning at speed. What actions would cause a forklift truck to tip over forwards or backwards? If you overload the forklift with too much load, it's gonna tip. If you've got the load too far forward, it's gonna tip. If you brake too hard, it's gonna tip forward as well. So 85, where don't you park? 
don't park near first aid stations, you don't park near firefighting equipment, you don't park near emergency exits. Three steps to correctly park up and shut down your forklift is we put the forks on the ground, uh, the forklift in neutral, park brake and remove the key. And why do we uh, remove the key to prevent unauthorised use? So 88 goes into unauthorised use. Uh, remove the keys and isolate, turn off the gas bottle and park it in a designated area. All right, thanks very much for watching. Uh, that is the, the student activity book for ProLift, done and dusted. If you want to look at the Calx, you can look at my uh, videos there. I go into Calx uh, of the forklift. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps you out. Cheers. Adios.